Hey, it's Victor Landa. I thought I'd uh, do a little video and talk to you about some of the things that I've been thinking about, at least in the past couple of weeks. There was a, uh, a conference here in San Antonio called Preparate, uh, Prepare Yourself, and it brought together about 500 or so uh, higher education professionals from across the country to talk about the dire need, the emergency that we're living when it comes to Latinos in higher education. And by that, I mean Latinos that enroll to call the, in college, that are accepted in college, and that stay in college and graduate from college. Because there's a big difference. There's a huge push in high schools and in agencies and organizations to get people or to get kids into college. But once they're there, they're sort of on their own. Uh, there's really not that much to keep Latino kids in college. And that's one of the huge problems that we have in our community. But see, the thing is that it's not just the Latino community's problem. As, as we're seeing in the census, the Latino community is growing at an incredibly fast rate. We're a young community, 10, uh, 10 years younger than the average uh, community in the United States. So it's going to be the Latino community that's going to be doing most of, of the earning and working and maintaining and, and making this country great in the years to come. And if the Latino community isn't prepared, then America as a whole is, is going to suffer. So it's not so much that we're setting aside only looking at Latinos and trying to see what this quote-unquote minority group is doing. This is a larger emergency. This is something that, that, that is incumbent on everyone in, in the American community at large to pay attention to. Since 1975, there has been an increase of 2% in the number of Latinos who graduate college. Since 1975, a 2% increase. That's incredibly unsatisfactory, if you can put those two words together. There is a goal to have 5.5 million Latinos graduate from college by 2020, and that's a pretty lofty goal. That goes along with uh, the larger goal of having um, 55 million uh, Americans at, at large graduate from college in the next nine years. That's the need, so then that's the goal. The question is, how are we going to get there? I was having a, a conversation with a, a gentleman online, and, and he pointed out that uh, you know the Latino community needs to be uh, more cognizant of education values and instill educational values in the community. And that really ticked me off, because that's a stereotype that is out there, that Latinos don't care about education. And I know personally that I care about education. My kids have been pushed to become as best as they can in college. Um, my parents pushed me, and I know thousands of families out there are doing the exact same thing. But for some reason, there is this idea that Latinos hold education in low regard. And then the following thing was um, Latinos don't care about education, and then they don't get educated and end up on, on government assistance. And when I asked, well, how many, of, of, how many Latinos are on government assistance? He couldn't tell me. And see, here's the thing. These are real numbers that are given by the government. 10% of the Latino population in the United States, only 10% of the Latino population in the United States receives food stamps. Only 7% of the Latino population in the United States is on some kind of welfare. Only 6% of the Latino population in the United States receives government housing subsidies. So where is this huge dole that Latinos are sucking from the government? It's not true. And the problem is that we don't own that narrative. We're not telling that story. We're letting other people tell the story and telling a wrong story and telling it loudly and spreading it widely. And the problem is we need to own our own narrative and tell the truth. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is we're armed with the truth ourselves. If we know what the percentages are, let me repeat that for you. 10% of the Latinos in the United States receive food stamps. 3% of the Latinos in the United States no, 7% of the Latinos in the United States are on welfare, and 3 to 4% of the Latinos in the United States receive some form of government subsidy for their housing. So the idea that Latinos are not being educated and they're therefore going on the government dole immediately is wrong. The idea that Latinos don't care about education is wrong. The idea that Latinos drop out, that's correct. Right about 50% of the Latinos in the United States will drop out of high school or, or have already dropped out of high school. So then the problem isn't something that we can push aside and point a finger and say, it's them, you do something about it. 
This is a problem that's going to affect the United States as a whole. And we can see exactly where it's brewing. We can see where the problem is. So we need to do something about it. So this conference that came together here in San Antonio a couple of weeks ago called Preparate, uh, I, I wrote recently where that word has sort of a double edge, well, not double edge meaning, but a double meaning. It's not so much prepare yourself. It's more like, you know, hold on to your hats and buckle up because this is going to be a hell of a ride. Prepare yourself because we got to do something and we have to do something fast. The first thing we need to do, and, and this goes for a lot of things, uh, when it comes to education and, and workforce development and immigration and politics and everything else, we need to start owning our own narrative. We need to start telling our own story ourselves and not wait for somebody else to tell it because they're not going to tell it. They're not going to tell it the right way. We need to do that ourselves. And uh, a lot of what we're doing here in New Stocko is trying to own that narrative. We owe nothing to no one so that we can tell our own story our way. And we hope you're listening and we're hoping that you'll help us tell the story as well. Hasta luego, se portan bien, have a good weekend guys.